Britain's tarnished colonial past took centre stage on Tuesday as King Charles began a four-day state visit to Kenya. After being welcomed to the presidential palace in Nairobi, the monarch and Queen Camilla laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warrior in Uhuru Gardens. It is a memorial to Kenya's freedom fighters, in the place where independence was declared 60 years ago. During his trip, Charles will meet with tech entrepreneurs, tour wildlife facilities and travel to the port city Mombasa. But he is also expected to acknowledge painful aspects of Britain's shared history with Kenya. That includes the suppression of the Mau Mau revolt between 1952 and 1960 by colonial forces. The Kenya Human Rights Commission estimates some 90,000 Kenyans were killed or maimed and 160,000 detained. The UK government has previously expressed regret for those abuses and agreed a $24 million settlement in 2013. Charles also surprised many at last year's Commonwealth Summit by acknowledging slavery's role in that organization's roots. But his Kenya visit comes at a time when former colonies are demanding that Britain do more. For many, including within Kenya, that means a direct apology and the endorsement of reparations for colonial era abuses. That includes torture, killings and the widespread expropriation of land, much of which remains in British hands. So this is Mwangi, you can explain, this is not the black soldier fly uh, farming, you can see that. Yes, and uh, this uh, one kg of this snail meat is quite uh, profitable compared to the kettle, kettle meat, yeah? You can also pluck it, yes, yes. So these are the culture, but uh, purple culture. Over the, the bucket. Yeah, there we are. Hope it's in time to get to the kitchen. Thank you. 
This is a highly encouraging first step under your leadership to deliver progress beyond tentative and equivocal half measures of past years. We are therefore confident that under your visionary leadership, the Kenya-United Kingdom relations will continue to prosper for the benefit of our two countries and peoples. Asante Nisana. And if colonialism was brutal and atrocious to African people, colonial reaction to African struggles for sovereignty and self-rule was monstrous in its cruelty. It culminated in the emergency which intensified the worst excesses of colonial impunity and the indiscriminate victimization of Africans. The wrongdoings of the past are a cause of the greatest sorrow and the deepest regret. There were abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans as they waged, as you said at the United Nations, a painful struggle for independence and sovereignty. And for that, there can be no excuse. In coming back to Kenya, it matters greatly to me that I should deepen my own understanding of these wrongs, and that I meet some of those whose lives and communities were so grievously affected. None of this can change the past, but by addressing our history with honesty and openness, we can perhaps demonstrate the strength of our friendship today. And in so doing, we can, I hope, continue to build an ever closer bond for the years ahead. <laughs> 